As our government talks politics, they talk debt sellings, they talk de-dollarization, the stock market woes, recession or not, uh, Bitcoin, gold, what do we invest in, inflation, all that stuff just gives us anxiety, doesn't it? Well, today we're going to talk about what I consider the quarter system. We're going to call it the quarter system. This is just another way to look at where we can put our money as a prepper or someone who wants to live sustainable and also wants to have some independence from, uh, I guess, the establishment. So what do we do? Uh, as I live on my homestead, I see uh, the beauty of the day. Every new day, we wake up and we start fresh. What can we do with our money to say, you know what? There could be some problems with our dollar. How can we protect our money we, we've worked so hard for? So today's video is going to be a good one. We're going to be talking about uh, four places to put your money, but uh, let's call it the quarter system. Hopefully this will help you like it's helped me because I use a lot of these principles myself. This is only opinion, but it could be something worth watching. So today's video is going to be a good one. What do we do with our cash? And what is this quarter system and how can we put our money up? Is it Bitcoin? Gold? Is it cash? Stock market? What's that answer? Today's video is going to be a good one. It starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate every time you click on our videos. We do ask that you go down here, subscribe and ring the bell, give us a thumbs up. That does help us stay in the algorithm. We've done several of these videos and every time we do these videos, I always wanna say that uh, all these principles you can take, you can customize because this is not about a broker. This is not about some biases. This is just a guy that lives in South Mississippi telling you what he does with his funds. And so far it's done pretty well for me. So let's jump right into it because to be honest with you one of the biggest questions we get is okay what are you doing with your money we talk food we talk sustainability we talk homesteading but now we got to talk about money because everybody needs money to live so let's jump into it so when I say the quarter system this is just the thought pattern four places you can put your money and we're gonna quarter them out 25% 25% 25% 25% now this is not a video on budgeting you need to budget you need to have a a set amount of money that pays your bills and you need to get out of debt having a weekly plan on on how you eat uh, how you budget and your discretionary income and also the income that's just a monthly expense like your insurances and, and so forth so first and foremost it's hard to put money somewhere if you don't have it most importantly you need to build a budget so you can see what money you're spending and what money you can save you can always save money in your budget don't believe you can't so Beside the point, you need to be building a budget. You need to be really tightening that down, especially in a situation and a volatility like our economy's in. Now, to move to, okay, where do we put this excess money? Where do we put our goods? How do we make sure the money that we're working so hard for is safe? So number one of this four part system, 25, 25, 25, 25, what are we doing with our money? Number one would be, I'm gonna put cash back. Right now, I don't know what, uh, cash looks like i don't know about the de-dollarization i don't know about the collapse of the dollar all those things are very legitimate however of that legitimate talk the value and the dollar index has not lost to a point where it's falling incredibly and you're going to lose all your money in cash is cash a great place to be no but in a situation where our federal government the money issues that's going on the volatility of the market the wars that are going on around the world it's making some unstable maneuvers with the economies we know that we've seen that the last few years so what i would do is say 25 percent needs to be cash now this is what i mean by 25 percent cash you may have a portion of this 25 percent at your home in true dollar bills no big deal I, I would challenge you to keep some tangible cash on hand but this may also be allocated in i have some in the bank that we don't touch it's not tied to any cd i can access it pretty quickly if i need it also this could be a money market account in the stock market so you may have pulled some funds out of uh, the market because it's volatile or some stocks that you had that you're worried that it's going to go down or the crash of a market all that it could be some money market cash that you have sitting there ready to put back in if need be so 25 percent would be what i call cash means i can tangibly grab the cash or i can have it ready to go to put into whatever investment or whatever i want to spend the money on so 25 percent having a cash asset is not a bad thing don't let people say oh cash is falling and you got to get rid of it all 
yeah, okay, that makes sense. But the fact is, you still got to have cash right now. And so right now, 25% put in these, but you know, in a local bank and pure cash dollar bills or in a money market is not a bad thing. 25% number one cash. Number two, I would call it precious metals, Bitcoin commodities. I would say an asset that is valuable to cash. It is another form of currency or money. So we always have people say, hey, what do you think about crypto? What do you think about gold? What do you think about silver? What do you think about Bitcoin? What do you think about XYZ? You know, because there's a million different kind of cryptos, blah, 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 blah. So again, I'm not advising you on anything. This is just my opinion. 25% of what money you have maybe can be looked at in this scenario okay i want to buy a little gold maybe 10 percent of that 25 percent. so maybe 10 or 15 percent of that goes to precious metals such as gold maybe some to silver because silver is pretty economic right now you should be buying a round of silver at least two or three times a month y'all i mean th there's no reason you're not buying at least one ounce of silver a month put it up for safekeeping it's literally 25 to 35 dollars for one ounce of silver right now silver will skyrocket all the people who believe in the environment and all the people who believe in the solar agenda and the battery agenda and this cleaner earth a lot of those things are going to need silver uh, and, and a lot of the things that we have need silver silver mining will become more important and also it's another form of currency so be mine a little silver here and there i always buy silver when i buy gold so i have some there so 25 percent we have gold, we're gonna put a portion of that 25% in. We have silver, we're gonna put a portion of, of our money in. And then we're gonna look at options like crypto or Bitcoin. Now, personally, crypto is not really a commodity to me, and it's a little too uh, volatile. And I know people have said, you know, you can get rich quick and all that. To me, it sounds like another scheme. So I tend to, to shy away from the Pepe or the NFTs or, or Dogecoin. Now, I'm not saying you can't play and have a little fun and buy $5 here, $10 here, $100 here, $50 here, whatever you want to have is just random money to play with. But personally, I'm not a big crypto just fan, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, can you get rich? on dogecoin maybe i mean but it's just not worth it to me i don't want to put all my eggs in one basket to then depend on someone else to basically take it digital currency scares me federally and individually now i do have a little um i don't want to say uh, hypocrisy there but bitcoin to me is a little bit different than your typical crypto i'm not invest i'm not a, i don't I'm, I'm not tied to any kind of company dealing with crypto or nothing like that or bitcoin but i do believe bitcoin is another parallel currency kind of like gold kind of like food um, and kind of even right now kind of like cash that's decentralized bitcoin could be an option for you in that 25 percent i'm not going to tell you to take all your money and buy bitcoin that's crazy i think that's nuts and i believe honestly if the grid fail, if the grid fails or you are having your money on the exchanges it's just as volatile as anything else but i am saying in that 25 percent window in that quarter window if you're buying a little gold, you're buying a little silver, there's nothing wrong with maybe purchasing a little uh, a little Bitcoin too. I personally buy gold more than all of this commodity section. I, I really do. I believe gold is a great thing to have. Now, I'm not against paper gold certificates. I'm not against buying gold uh, or silver mining stocks. That's not my forte personally. I like having physical gold, physical silver. I don't even like someone holding my gold and silver. I personally like to know where it's at, tangibly where I can get my hands on it. Now, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, you can actually leave on the exchanges if you don't have a lot of money. Hey, just play with it. Buy $50 here, $100 here of Bitcoin on Cash App or you know whatever application you're using. If you start getting a significant amount of that, look at things like cold storage, such as the little cold storage wallets. Uh, I'm Again, not sponsored by any of this, just like the treasure wallets, things like that where you can pull it off. Now, does that mean uh, it's safe? No, but none of the things that we talk about really are safe in the volatility of the market now other than the next topic that we're going to be discussing but number two is going to be commodity style uh currency assets so it would be gold silver bitcoin if you want to throw crypto in there i'm okay with that but just don't do too much i think that that's a very scary thing and we've seen too many people just lose money on it because really what is it we talk about the dollar you know not truly really having value because it went off the gold standard and it's based on the faith of the government well really crypto and and nfts are really based on the the speculation of 
whatever you know whatever the new craze is so just be careful of that so I, again gold and silver really key uh that 25 percent window but i don't mind you saying hey look let's look at bitcoin it's a good parallel economy and it could be something where you can take money and transact it a little bit easier when you can't send gold coins you know across the world the next percentage is probably the best percentage and this is the one that's less volatile when you purchase it and it's going to be your food security your food necessities and also your home goods so what do i mean by this this is truly assets that you live with daily that you cannot live without this would be our water so i look at water storage this would be our food so we talk prepping we talk farming we talk seeds we talk about stockpiling our pantries this would be this window this 25 percent now people say oh, why would i want to buy that much food when i'm struggling to pay ends meet or i'm struggling to pay this bill or that bill because no matter what you do you have to eat you have to uh, have water you have to live if you lose if you lose independence with food you have to realize that that is the one part that they will get you with the most it's not it's not, it's not the cash it's not the dollar bills it's not the gold it's the food if you can't control your food you can't control your medicine you can't control your living goods daily that is when it's going to be an issue and that is when your independence is going to become dependence so 25% of all your money that's left, all your money that you can put towards it needs to be in food security, needs to be in buying freeze dried foods or investing in ways to grow food or investing in a freeze dryer or something dealing with food for sure. Not only is it food in this 25%, it's our, our, our security. So it'd go back to water. You know, do you have a well? Do you have a hand pump for your well? Do you have water storage? Can you buy gallons of water? Can you buy the water storage just like the ones we have from Legacy that we've talked about before? There's these big water totes that are food grade water buckets that you can cap off, you can have just in case for emergencies. This also talks about self-defense tools. We've talked about videos on ones that I like, how much to stockpile of this, but that would also be in here. Self-defense items and brass and food do you realize those things have not went down when gold has just hedged against inflation our dollars have struggled the stock market has struggled food prices have not really went down so if you're investing in food and you're investing in securities you're investing in things like um, how you protect your home such as self-defense tools and, and ammo and, and brass then you are actually doing something to invest in your future because you're building a independence into a volatile system so 25% would be food, water, self-defense items. Also, this goes back to shelter. This goes back to your automobiles. We have to start piling money towards this thing to get out of debt. Don't pay your minimums. Don't go buy a new house in this crazy volatile climate that has major interest issues and implications. I would kind of sit on that. But you need to be putting money towards your automobiles, towards uh, your home to try to get those things paid off if you so once you have your food security your water security your you know your ammo your self-defense you could start looking at a piece of property i'm not saying buy 50 acres or 100 acres it may be just going out in the middle of nowhere with a family member and buying an acre or two or buying five acres because then you can start looking at options like agriculture you can look at things like our sheep you can look at things like cows or pigs because then you're building an independent food system that is not needing the grocery Remember, there is a freight issue that's really happening in America right now. There is food grocery stores that are, there are grocery stores that are going up on prices and having shortages. Those things you cannot always depend on. I mean, read about the freight issue that's going on right now with trucking. We're going to be doing a video on, on supply chains again very soon. But you have to have the independence. This 25% quadrant of your money having it in food security water and having it in some form of you know security for your family is key so yes shelter would be in here yes automobiles would be in here getting out of debt definitely needs to be part of this plan too but you need to have some food security water security self-defense items because if you lose this quadrant your independence becomes dependent and your dependence is back on government or the players that be so the last quarter is probably the most boring quarter <laughs> It's you keep the status quo. You, you keep your retirement investments of the 401k going. However, you, you are cautious and you take good advice from whomever you trust in brokering your, your financial retirement. 
Uh, that's not me. I'm not a broker. I'm just telling you what I personally do with my own money. It's opinion. But you need to say, okay, I need to keep investing in my 401k because you know what? The ebbs and flows, the rises and falls. Right now, if you're retiring, it's kind of bad. It's volatile. However, there's times in our economy where it's really good to, to be in the stock market. So I don't put all my eggs in the stock market. I keep, again, some in money market. But if we were to say, okay, I still want to keep my retirements going, this is that money that does that. I'm going to still have a 401k and I will still put it in good mutual funds that have a good track record. Also, that status quo is living. We have to live. So of this 25%, we have to learn to be opportunistic with it. And yes, hold it for debts, hold it for monthly uh, extras, hold it for expenditures that you didn't see coming. But also, it's just truly keeping status quo. Uh, we give 10% of our money, uh, of course, to giving. We're a Christian, so we still believe that that is the best benefit we can do is to give to someone else and help someone else, help our, help our church, help the, the work of, of Christ. That's what we believe as Christians. So we give, and that's a part of, uh, we invest, we invest spiritually uh, in other people. So number four, <laughs> it's, Keep the status quo. Tighten your budget. You refine your budget. You keep investing in your retirements in the stock market. You do maybe change those. It may be different. It may be different mutual funds. It may be different indexes depending on what your broker tells you. But ultimately, you keep the status quo. You give and you help. And you sit back on whatever little extra money that you have that you hadn't put in all these other categories and you wait for any opportunity that may arise that could come up and it could help you or you hold it there just in case for any expenses that you have that were unforeseen. Times are not getting easier. The debt ceiling issue we've talked about, I believe, I believe we don't need to raise the debt ceiling. I believe we, we, have to, we have to get to a point where as Americans, we gotta quit spending money. That's personally and also for our government. So when we talk about the four quarters, keeping status quo, food securities, independence with what we have, daily life, having some cash wherever you're wanting to put cash dollar bills or money markets are in the bank and then again precious metals golds commodities things like bitcoin that's okay we have a whole picture and it helps us diverse ourselves a little bit if the dollar falls you have other options like the gold the silver the bitcoin if all of a sudden food is hard to get you have food you have the security of knowing that you have the independence without having to get junk food or gmo food brought to you that's been provided for by your government if the fact is the stock market's doing really good, then again, you have that retirement to go to fall back on. Even when cash or food or gold is good to have, you have the stock market that was doing really good, maybe for the last 10 years. Do you see? You're well-rounded. The well-roundedness, the status quo, to put some in cash, to put some in commodities and food. This is not a crazy radical plan. It's just a good thought pattern to say, this may be the wisest way to look at money these four. The quarter plan, these four quarters, equals one whole picture, and I think it could help us to be wise with our money and to take care of our family and have less stress and worry on things like our money and have more time to spend with our family. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this video. My goal is not to teach you anything. It's just to give you information to hopefully gain wisdom to say, you know what, this may work for me too, and that's what I hope. Thank you again for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, go down here. Please hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. That does help us stay again in the algorithm. Our goal is to grow our channel with more information and hopefully help us live in a crazy world that we call home. God bless. Happy homestead.